Carl and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHBuild.com for sure. And it is track by track time as we are looking at something from these aisles. A little bit more up north though, it is Glory Hammer and the album Taken, ta Taken Tales from the Kingdom of Fife. It is the debut album by the Anglo-Swiss Symphonic Power Metal Band and was released 29th of March 2013 in Europe. I was aware, I, I, I'm before i've never listened to this album fully but a lot of the tracks that i'm aware of thanks to i think it was 2016 cats they were on at bloodstock and i knew they're a power metal band and bloodstock power metal is sometimes in short supply so you kind of just want to go see it because it's different and me and my wife went and watched gloria hammer and had a blast with it and uh yeah i ended up learning a lot of tracks from that because i heard them there but yeah yeah much experience but, yeah but um, I, I'm the complete opposite actually. I've not, I've not listened to anything directly by Glory Hammer. Obviously, there's a few bit of songs there here and there with uh, members of Glory Hammer, mm. um, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I went out of my way to want to listen to this because I wasn't in Bad Bloodstock in 2016. Uh, or I don't think I was. Or if I was, I might have been there for one day only. Yeah, I think that was that. Um, was and then, yeah, so that was one day only when it, so I didn't see, or I don't remember seeing Glory Hammer. Uh, and I know that they're going to be there this year. Yeah. Um, so again, I think the same this year around with Bloodstock, there's not a significant amount of power metal. So I really wanted to try and get into some Glory Hammer so that I go and see them. Pretty convinced I would have a good time because of the style of music anyway, but it'd be cool to know a few tracks, you know? Yeah, that's completely so I'm, fair. I'm basically the polar opposite of you. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing, like, this is just a track by track. We're not theming this around Bloodstock, you know? It is just... We decided to do this one. Yeah. Yep. We begin with Anne Struthia's Dark Prophecy, a, a magical, suitably epic intro to get you pumped for what will come next. It's an intro, a good one. Yep. Nice and grand, nice and big, sets the scene up nicely. You know, lots of the old power metal vibes and their marching drums, fanfare, and all that. But, you know, a lot of the time with these intros, like we are about to say, and I'll, I'll say next, is like what kind of happens next and, you know, how it how it goes from this into the next track. Yeah, which is exactly that. The Unicorn Invasion of Dundee, one of the most famous tracks. We go straight into this. It's a grand piece of power metal glory. I love this track. Some proper chest beating shit. It makes me want to go out and punch the shit out of some unicorns. Leave Scotland alone. They've got plenty of things to deal with, like the English and heroin addiction. So they do not need unicorns and raiding either. to see you put us above heroin addiction <laughs> well you know the English <laughs> are worse, aren't they <laughs> uh yeah same for, for me i love it uh yeah. great brilliant song rolling drum beats catchy melody you know all the big horns and all the grand orchestral stuff going on um love the pre-chorus man all across this album even away from choruses it's pre-choruses with glory <laughs> camera that coming out of the voice verse then getting into a higher bit before we drop the chorus i was like shit these guys are they're all right at choruses, but fucking pre-choruses, they got the shit down. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, good solos. Um, yeah, just top quality song, ticks all the right boxes. Angus McFife, tongue in cheek silliness that is as epic and powerful as you'd hope it to be. Glory Hammer sure know how to make you feel 10 feet tall. I'm a massive fan of the vocals here, and the chorus is stupidly catchy. This is one where you know it's a good sing along live. Yeah, catchy as hell. Um, you know, loads of great kind of folkish mel melody um again love the small verse which just with the help of the pre-chorus and jumps into those simple and catchy choruses it's fun it's entertaining it's memorable it's just a it's just a fun song man yeah that's it it's just a fun song quest for the hammer of glory and is this the most power metal title ever i mean look what you've got there you've got the word quest you've got hammer You've got glory. You can even throw them four and there, and just to add even more weight to it. But this slower tempo offering sells the grandness of the journey in question. It feels big, even while having a slower tempo. It is a very fun, again, interesting. I just enjoy it all the way through. My Yeah, 
Yeah, same for me. Uh, love the epic start. Shouted vocals. Darker, slower riffs are great. The big orchestral elements, you know, it's a nice switch up as well after a couple of kind of more upbeat. It's not like it's downbeat, you know, it's still it's still got that kind of vibe, but, you know, it's just a played at a different pace, really. Yeah. And the vocals are phenomenal. The pre-chorus, again, is awesome. Uh, the chorus is, 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 is good, but it's not like quite as catchy as everything that's come before. Uh, right. But overall, I'm really enjoying the song. And at this point, I did point out, and I'm also really enjoying the kind of fantastical story being told in this in this album you know which is a big part of it yeah we should bring this up right now i initially was going to cl- include it as part of like the pre-talk you know the part where i sort of say about what year it came out but this isn't just a concept album this is a fucking story and there's so yeah. much detail in it that all i do is suggest suggest to you the watcher go read up on it because the album itself is an entire story and it is a lot of detail in it <laughs> yes yeah Magic Dragon. Now, I wrote at the start, aren't all dragons magic, so to speak? Like, a dragon is magic in itself. What's a magic dragon, you know? don't know. Yeah? I know that's, uh, maybe they're back on the heroin thing, and that chasing <laughs> the dragon. Well, this track has some jangling and folkish melodies that stand out. The punchy rhythm is fine here. This is one that I'm not quite as into as what came before. It's still a quality track, but it's one where I'm like, okay, I... I'd skip this one if it came on again. I like I like parts of it. Um, there are bits of it I don't. Uh, you know, it's the first kind of negative for me, and that's some of the weird kind of effect tones, which again for me sound a little bit like almost eight bit sort of styled music, um, which I'm not really a fan of at all. Um, I think it has loads of cool moments. You know, some great drums, great vocals. There's a few little violin sections I like, which um, are also pretty cool. Um, you know, it's 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 catchy enough at times. It's just, uh, you know, it's not. I don't think it's. I don't think it's quite up there with the level of the four tracks that came before it. Yeah, this is the thing about this album. I know it's quite early on. The bar was set fucking high at the start. Yeah, yeah. Silent Tears of Frozen Princess. Very melodramatic at the start with the soft string instruments. Before the volume increases a touch and we get a more symphonic sound. It's still super mellow though, and I like the sweetness of it. When it does get grand, it just becomes even more powerful. Kind of like how Obi-Wan Kenobi did when Darth Vader struck him down. Ooh, I, I, you might know nonsense a lot of the time in this, this one for once. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th- there's a lot I like about this one. You know, it's quite, uh, you know, I like the emotion in the violins and guitars in the intro. Yeah. The slow, steady beats, nice. The vocals are strong. Builds up to a nice enough chorus, which is a little bit more oomph, but... It falls a little bit flat. <clears throat> Excuse me. It falls a bit, little bit flat in the chorus for me. Yeah. It kind of feels a little bit to me like, <clears throat> you know, with such a slow, gentle build up and so much time taken to get to it that maybe they thought it was grander than it actually sounds. Right. Like when you get to that chorus, like I was like, you know, this is going to be huge, and then it's like, oh, it's it's kind of medium sized. Yeah, you know, like that, and you're like, oh, bring it down. Yeah, you go. Yeah. Oh, I'll just I'll have I'll have a drink instead. <laughs> you know. Um, so lots of lots of good stuff. Don't get me wrong. I like the little addition of the female vocals that get blended in at, at a point. That was a nice surprise. Um, <laughs> weirdly enough, I have I, I struggle with the name of this song because it doesn't make sense to me very much. Like it sh- it should either be princesses or it should be of a frozen princess or the yeah something like that. Oh. Unless her name was literally hey how you doing? My name's Princess Frozen Princess. Then it kind of works, <laughs> but um, I kind of you know what I did like about this this song, and that was again going back to the story because from the story perspective, it was nicely fitted in, and it, it was the time where it needed to get to this sort of stuff. I just didn't yeah. quite feel that like this song had the magic of it. Particularly as you say, I think the most important thing is you expected something bigger, and it didn't quite reach those heights, which is fair. That's these things happen. Amulet of Justice, uh, one of the most hyperactive tracks on the album. The speed is more akin to Dragon Force than anything else. It's got some thumping dr- uh, drums and uh, thick guitar hooks. I like this track. I don't love this track. Uh, 
I like it a lot. I don't know if I, I wouldn't. I don't love it. I guess mm. I didn't mark it down as one of me three, for example. But um, I do like the start, and I, I guess maybe coming off the back of the previous one, you know, the fact that it kind of kicks back in and you're instantly lifted back up, you know, with really really quick drums and guitars and everything about it is about speed and um yeah i enjoyed it a lot uh, i thought the drums were actually probably the most outstanding part of the song like listening mm -hmm. to the drums and the different fills and blasts and stuff that they were throwing in there so very much enjoyed the drum side of it fair enough yeah we're uh, on a kind of a, a good a sort of run now where it's just like this is a good track it's just not a great track yeah Let's see if Hell to Krell changes that. You're going to have to bear with me here because I've just rewritten, reread what I've wrote and it's nonsense. Um, I wrote, it makes you want to go out and buy some fucking chain mail. Can you buy chain mail? I need some chain mail. Glory Hammer are calling me to hell something called a Krell. What the fuck's a Krell? That's, I didn't actually review the track. I just wrote that. I did this yeah. like a month ago. <laughs> so a fair question though. What is a Krell? I don't know. Um, but whatever a Krell is, it makes for a good song. <laughs> um, I, I very, very much like this song. This was kind of back to, you know, the early parts of the album now for me, like in terms of the quality I felt, you know, it's another big kind of fist pumping one, catches held vocals and drums, uh, banging pre-chorus, memorable and singable chorus. You know, you can kind of feel, see the crowd punching the air and shouting at the hail along with the band, you know. Um, yeah, I know I would be anyway. Great stuff, cool solo, very, very enjoyable. Awesome. Beneath Cowden Beef. Um, what's on the Cowden Beef? I want answers. In the meantime, I'll enjoy this hefty slab of instrumental power metal. So it's an instrumental as well and a solid one at that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the same, same for me. You know, it's, just, it's, it's great. Good songs, good melody, good drums, big sounds. <sighs> nice and energizing, you know, short, but good fun. Good music. It's short for a reason. It's short for a reason because of what fucking comes next. Holy shit. The epic rage of furious thunder. So many words that sound so power metal. Epic rage, furious thunder. 10 plus minutes long. This is a fucking huge track and I love it. I want power metal to transport me and this one does that. I feel like I'm on the highlands or in the valleys or a chip shop asking for a fried Mars bar. I don't actually want one. I'm trying to shelter from the epic rage of the furious thunder that has started to come down outside. Ballistic guitars, thumping drums, clever melodies. It takes things in a few different directions that goes on, but that's a damn good thing. This basically is the, the album's finale for me, considering what comes afterwards. But my God, is this, every, in every way, every instrument, massive. Yeah, it is. It's it's a it's a phenomenal man. I was quite nervous going into it because like the length is it's that's a significant amount of time. You know, even for the the best bands in the world out there, if they say we're going to hit you with an eleven-ish minute track, you're going to be a little bit on edge and be like, oh, that's a yeah. long time. <laughs> but um, you know, it's it it it, it, it you're ne there's never an inch of boredom. There's never a second of boredom within it. You know, it's constantly enjoyable. It's grand. I think it completes the story very well. Um, I love the way that all the other songs that came previous to it appear in the lyrics throughout this song, you know, as they almost, it's like a retelling of, of how we got to this point. Yeah. Um, loads of cool transitions, drum solos, spoken words, orchestras. It's got fucking everything in it. Um, you know, never felt a second of boredom at all in what truly is an epic tale. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't think I don't think our words can do this track justice. I think if you've got time and uh, you want to listen to one track from this album, don't necessarily pick the obvious ones at the start. Maybe pick this one, as I think you'll really get a great impression of what the, this band is. But the last track is Wizards, and it's a short outro, effectively. Short and to the point. Uh, I like it. It's nothing spectacular. Particularly, it's almost like I'm trying to come down from the epic Rage of Furious Thunder. And I felt like maybe this one could have been, uh, it's no problem at being there, but maybe shorter and even more mellow just to kind of have that, there's your outro fully, you know? Yeah, should have been should have been a hidden song. Mm, yeah. Secret song. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you said, it's short, you know, um, there's nothing particularly like 
bad in it uh, so much. Probably the same thing happening to me as happened to you, which is just that I felt like the album was done. It's yeah. ended. Probably didn't need another. Um, I think because of, I understand it's there from a story perspective and that maybe was the only thing in this whole album that was almost damaged by the story because I just felt like because of that, that the album kind of closes on a bit more of like a whimper instead of the massive epic tale that it, it could have been or should have been. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing bad, just probably not, just a bit of a flat song to close out an album, a bit of a disappointment to end on that one. When if it had ended at the end of number 10, I would have probably been raving about that. Yeah, yeah, can't argue with it at all. Okay, then I think we're gonna. I actually think this might be the first or very few times where we our uh, three tracks are exactly the same. The top three tracks, I'll tell you mine then. Uh, the Unicorn Invasion yep. of Dundee, Angus McFife, and the Epic Rage of Furious Thunder. Uh, and I've gone for the Epic Rage of Furious Thunder, Angus McFife, and the Unicorn mm-hmm. Invasion of Dundee. There you go, I just did it back, <laughs> I did it backwards to get a bit of tension, the one, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are the three best tracks, I do think. You know, uh, best showcase of Gloria Hammer and this album overall. But overall, I think it's yeah. a it's a great album, and I I really hope we hear a lot of these tracks. We will hear certain ones for sure, but I hope we hear a lot of these tracks on this um, at Bloodstock. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Even the eleven minute one, that'd be cool. Even that, exactly. <laughs> End the set with that. Perfect. Yeah. You got any thoughts? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?